We are going to briefly review the idea of inertial reference frames. In particular, we're about to go into perhaps the most challenging topic in the entire semester. And unfortunately, you have to understand inertial reference frames for this to make any sense. Inertial reference frames were covered in mechanics in the first semester of intro physics, and they're one of the mo most challenging topics we talk about then. So this is going to be a very, very brief review, um, and I encourage you to go back to the videos from mechanics and turn to that section of the book to try to re remind yourself a little bit about how reference frames work. So briefly, the idea is that we have two different coordinate systems, one which is moving with respect to the other. So we call this coordinate system A, we call this coordinate system B. Now this reference frame, B, is moving with a velocity with respect to A. And so we call that V sub B A, so B with respect to A. Now, if we have some sort of physical thing occurring, for instance, the motion of a particle, we can measure this motion in these two different reference frames. And the value we're going to get, for instance, for the velocity, is going to have a different value. So an example of this, is a person standing on the side of the road and a person in a train. And the person in the train might be holding a ball in their hand and they say, well, the ball is still. And the person on the side of the road says, no, I see the ball in the train going by. So that's a simple example. Whenever we're talking about reference frames, the idea of inertial reference frames just means that our uh, velocity is not changing. So inertial reference frames means that we have a constant velocity, specifically this would be BA, and so the laws of physics should really work the same way in every single reference frame. If you're on an airplane, the airplane is going, in, well that's in the air, is going incredibly fast, but if you start playing a game of catch with your friend on the airplane, which might in general be discouraged, everything still seems to work normally. Nothing about your speed actually changes what happens to the ball as you throw it. Because this constant velocity is added to everything. When you hit turbulence, that's actually then your velocity changing, which is why turbulence, you know, knocks things over. So again, this was a very brief review. Um, one of the challenging things that we did in mechanics was actually adding velocities and thinking about the velocity vectors. We're not actually going to do, need to do that right now. You just need to remember a little bit about what we're talking about with reference frames. So when we think about physics and reference frames, there are a bunch of things that are going to not be agreed upon between the two reference frames, but there are even more things that are agreed upon. Now there's one big caveat here, and that I'm talking about non-relativistic. So the, our speed, right, the magnitude of that velocity vector is much, much smaller than the speed of light. And the reason I point that out is because in section one of chapter 31, the book does start talking a little bit about relativity. We're not going to do relativity in intro physics, don't worry. So some of these things don't hold true if we're talking about relativistic frames, but that's a topic for modern physics if you're going to be continuing on and taking that. So some of the things that these two reference frames might disagree on, well, position, right? If I call myself the origin and I'm standing on the ground and you call yourself the origin of your reference frame when you're on the train you're holding a ball, clearly you and I don't agree that the ball is at the origin. So that's kind of a, a trivial disagreement. Next would be velocity. Again, if you're holding the ball on the train that's moving, you would say the ball is still. I see the ball moving with the velocity of the train. Now with that comes kinetic energy. You would say that the ball has no kinetic energy because I see the ball moving, it does have kinetic energy. So the caveat here is that um, energy doesn't always work well if you're talking about different reference frames. It still will work, it's just a little more complicated to think about. But what's more important are all of the things we do agree on. So the biggest one, and the one we're going to need to think about in the next video, is that we agree on the acceleration and therefore the force. And of course, the force, in this case we can say net force, but individual forces will uh, hold true as well. 
that, of course, there's a trivial uh, relationship between these as long as we agree on the mass. Agreeing on the mass distance and time is true in the non-relativistic uh, system. We also would agree on the relative position between two things. You would say that you're holding the ball. If you are the origin, you say the ball is at the origin. I would agree that you and the ball are in the same place. Relative velocity, you would say that if you are still in your reference frame and you are holding the ball, that the ball is going the same speed you are. I would say, yeah, you're going the same speed, but that's not zero. So why this matters is, for instance, we're going to agree on specific events. So if you get, if the train, for instance, gets to a tunnel, we are going to agree that the train goes through the tunnel. If at the moment the train enters the tunnel, a uh, flag is raised, we are going to agree that the flag is raised the moment the train enters the tunnel. So for just simple things of does something happen or not, we absolutely agree. But we don't necessarily agree on velocity. So hopefully that that's true, but then this one's really important. We agree on the force, we agree on the acceleration, and that has to do with, you know, we agree on changes. If you throw the ball up, then you would see it fall straight down. I would see it travel in projectile motion, but in both cases we agree that it's uh, the motion is due to the force of gravity. So again, this is kind of a review from intro, um, so if this is very confusing, please go back and review that.